Well, that looks correct. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about ports and a, a little bit and a lot about rail. So uh, we've had airports. Um, we've heard a lot today about the importance of the agricultural industry for Australia. I certainly agree with that, but fundamentally for it to prosper and grow, it needs to have an efficient route to market. And on the East Coast, that means uh, the adequate development of rail and coastal shipping to support our current truck-centric logistics model. Uh, and the core of the discussion today that I'm going to present is around inland rail in particular and the importance of that project uh, for our rail logistics task on the East Coast. Well, this is Fishman Islands. Uh, it's uh, effectively the core of Port of Brisbane. It's a magnificent deep water port, uh, the envy of every other capital city in Australia and many uh, cities around the world. Uh, I've spent my whole career in Europe uh, and Asia uh, and pretty much every city I've worked in, uh, in a port sense, would love a port like this. 29 operating berths, over 7.2 kilometres of key line. We've got 2.7 kilometres still to build out in terms of key line. We've got over 500 hectares of brownfield expansion site uh, on Fishman Islands. To give you an idea of the scale of the, the room we've got to go on Port of, Port of Brisbane, development of Port of Brisbane, that area there, the whole of Port Botany fits into that. So there is an enormous amount of room there to expand for the next 100 years for this port. Uh, our channel is at 20% capacity. Uh, our rail terminal is at about 10% capacity. Uh, this port represents a major strategic advantage for the east coast of Australia, and particularly northern New South Wales and Queensland, provided it's supported by a highly efficient logistics chain feeding traffic into and out of it. Unfortunately, that is not what we have today. Uh, fundamentally, the Port of Brisbane is the, the conduit for trade in northern New South Wales and Queensland. We handle over $50 billion worth of trade through that node every year. Uh, to give you an idea of scale, that's about 20% of the state's, state of Queensland's GSP. 50% uh, of all of Queensland's international trade moves through this port. 95% of the region's containers and motor vehicles, 100% of Queensland's meat, 50% of Queensland's agricultural exports in northern New South Wales agricultural exports. Uh, critically, uh, approaching 50% of our trade comes from the west of Toowoomba. So the areas uh, of southern Queensland and northern New South Wales are vitally important for us. Uh, the region of northern, northern New South Wales and Queensland is very much dependent uh, on a fully functioning port in the Port of Brisbane, uh, and we are very much dependent on a fully functioning logistics chain to operate efficiently. If we look historically, that's been our trade very quickly. Kagar about 4% on volume. We have never gone down in any given year since our records begin in the early 1990s. Uh, and that really reflects Australia's position as a trading nation and the port as a, as a node uh, in, that, um, in that chain. Uh, looking at our containers, this is an important graph. We saw 11% growth in containers up to the GFC. We've seen about 5 to 7% since that time. We're forecasting about 7% CAGR container growth going forward. What that means is a doubling of containers in the next 10 years and quadrupling in the next 25 years. Our current modal share of, uh, of containers on rail or coastal shipping is about 4%. We do 96% 90, of our containers move by road and 90% of those containers move down the Gateway Motorway in Brisbane. That means, and by the way, our rail is full. I'll talk a little bit about that shortly. That means every incremental tonne that we handle through this port going forward will go by road until we develop a rail solution. That means just in terms of containers, and that's only one small segment of our, our overall trade, by 2045, container trucks will move, will mean 16 million truck movements per annum uh, coming, emanating from or leaving from this port. Uh, that's all going down the gateway. Uh, I don't need to tell you that congestion is coming. This country has never seen freight-related congestion. Uh, many countries around the world have seen it. We haven't seen it. But it's coming and it's real if we don't get our modal share correct. If we look at the agricultural industry, uh, 10 years ago we were 85% on rail. We're now 85% on road. Uh, we have obviously an expanding global food demand. We've heard a lot about that today. Uh, and this industry is vitally important for Australia. It will be here long after, for example, the mining sector has gone. But having said that, uh, the mining sector and the agricultural sector are completely and utterly symbiotic 
in our current environment. Why is that? Uh, because for our agricultural industry to thrive, it must have a route to market. It must have a balanced modal share to reach that market. It means it must have rails, rail solution as well as road solutions. There is only one product on the east coast of Australia that pays for freight rail, and that's coal. There's only one product on the west coast of Australia that pays for freight rail, that's iron ore. Uh, it's imperative that our agricultural industry embraces our mineral resource industry because it's the only way it's going to get the freight rail access that it needs to, br to, bring, an efficient, uh, to, to bring an efficient logistics chain uh, for the agricultural industry going forward. Very quickly, we look at our coal. We've gone from 3 million to 9 million tonnes. We're expanding to 15 million tonnes. We've got a demand multiple times above that. Why is that? Because Brisbane is the natural export point for the southern Surat Basin and northern New South Wales. Uh, we should be looking to foster coal exports out of our southern Surat Basin to pay for our rail infrastructure that our intermodal and agricultural sectors need going forward. Uh, this is my scorecard of how landside logistics infrastructure rates in Australia. Uh, in, in particular as it relates to, to Brisbane. Uh, road, I've got 7 out of 10. That's probably a little bit mean. I think probably more 8 or 9 out of 10. We're very well serviced by road at the Port of Brisbane, uh, particularly after the Toowoomba Range uh, second crossing is built, uh, which is now being committed to. Uh, we've got a, a brand new port motorway, which is lovely, although it will be full in 15 years, uh, full of trucks, uh, and we don't have anywhere to expand. So that's a bit of an issue. But at the moment, it's very good. We've got... Uh, no, we've got motorway going uh, north, south and west for 100 kilometres, no traffic lights. That's a great position to be in. Uh, it's allowed us to exist up to now without having to address our, our modal share issue. If we look at our rail, uh, 2 out of 10 is uh, extremely generous. Uh, the reality is this is very poor. It was built in the 1860s. It's antiquated. Major failures in the, over the last two years, uh, which has uh, meant uh, that the rail's been out for four months out of that time. Uh, inefficient, expensive, travels directly through an urban environment, mixes with passengers as it comes through the urban network of Brisbane, major social issues associated with it. As a result of our poor rail, we have no intermodal system to speak of on the east coast of Australia, uh, and particularly uh, in, in Queensland itself. Uh, coastal shipping, uh, I give it one out of ten. That's, again, probably a little bit generous. We do less than one per cent of our containers on coastal shipping. Uh, there's been no serious attempt to address coastal shipping over the course of the last 10 years. In fact, the previous uh, federal government introduced laws that effectively killed it. Um, unfortunately, uh, that means that we're putting containers on trucks and driving them 2,000 kilometres from Brisbane to Cairns, or Brisbane to Townsville, which is crazy. We've got a free highway sitting, sitting on the sea. We need to use it just as they have in the, UK, uh, in the UK and Europe, where they've introduced the motorways of the sea concept over the last 10 years and seen a significant shift off, off roads and onto, uh, and onto coastal shipping. If we're looking forward, well, how do we solve it in terms of our East Coast freight system? Uh, well, we need to get the modal share right. Um, that means uh, we need a modern intermodal freight system with at least 30% of our containers moving on rail and coastal shipping, preferably a lot more than that. And this applies to Sydney, Melbourne, applies to every, every uh, major port in Australia. We need to look long haul in terms of Brisbane going west using rail. Uh, and south using rail, going north using coastal shipping, and we need to focus our truck journeys on short haul out of the intermodal um, hubs uh, that will sit uh, uh, on that rail and coastal shipping network. Um, we've got our road, I think, pretty much sorted out, so I won't really go into that. We need to implement a, model, mod, a modern rail system from the Port of Brisbane to the west of Toowoomba, which I'm mainly going to be talking about shortly, and obviously coastal shipping, as I mentioned before, to service the northern Queensland intermodal hubs uh, I call the Port of Townsville, Port of Mackay. They are simply intermodal hubs serviced by coastal shipping. The sooner they're privatised, the better, because we can get on with uh, actually generating and developing a coastal shipping service that makes sense. Uh, this is not a wish list. This will occur. Um, it's a question of whether we, we develop it in advance uh, or we actually uh, wait until we've got a complete mess uh, and then try and solve it. Uh, the first cab off the rank, uh, rail access from the west uh, to the uh, from the west of Toowoomba to the Port of Brisbane, um, and the key to that is the inland rail project. Uh, the federal government uh, initiated uh, inland rail project. Historically, this project has uh, been seen as too hard. It's been around for a while. Uh, why is that? Because the Toowoomba to Port of Brisbane leg uh, was way too hard and way too expensive to address uh, previously. 
the cost of going from Toowoomba to the Port of Brisbane with, with freight rail is a lot more than going from Melbourne to Toowoomba. Uh, so that is the bit that needs to be solved. Uh, inland rail is vital to the future of New South Wales and Queensland, and particularly northern New South Wales and Queensland. Uh, the key to inland rail, therefore, is solving uh, the, the dilemma of uh, pushing rail from the Port of Brisbane to the west of Toowoomba. This needs to be the first phase of inland rail, coupled with the missing link between um, uh, New South Wales and, and Queensland, which I'll mention. Uh, but why does the, the port link need to be the first uh, cab off the rank? Well, it's the only commercial section of inland rail, uh, and it's also the most expensive, as I mentioned before. If we deal with that, you break the back of inland rail. If you don't deal with it, you don't have inland rail. There's no point building a railway between Melbourne and Toowoomba if you can't get to the port. Uh, this is a, a pretty crude uh, map, but I'm sorry for the quality of it, but, uh, but uh, inland rail looks like this. Uh, Melbourne to Brisbane, uh, much of the southern section is in place. Major areas to do in central New South Wales and all of Queensland, uh, in essence. Uh, and uh, it will need to be supported by appropriate intermodal terminals at uh, points uh, along its route. Now, that doesn't mean every regional centre. It means key centres uh, that we can consolidate a hub-and-spoke model to distribute our agricultural product uh, into the export market. Uh, the federal government has put aside 300 million to kickstart this project. That is sufficient to get phase one going, uh, which I'll talk about shortly. Uh, Queensland is, uh, is the, the, the key bit, as I mentioned. Um, uh, where, what, what's involved in uh, inland rail in terms of the Queensland leg? Well, firstly, the missing link, which uh, uh, travels uh, effectively North Star up to Gundawini. There's no rail line there at the moment. Uh, you would probably know that New South Wales, uh, through the great planning of our forefathers, is a standard gauge line. Queensland is a narrow gauge line. Uh, so that needs to be a dual gauge line. At least we can actually uh, then access, uh, well, Northern New South Wales can access uh, the Port of Brisbane out of, say, Moree. Uh, and if they want to, which they probably don't, uh, the southern Queensland areas can go south uh, out of Gundawindi. Uh, the, uh, then a direct line, the green line from uh, Gundawindi to Toowoomba, that doesn't really need to happen quickly. There's already a line running from Gundawindi to Warwick that can be used. Um, connection to Queensland Rail's uh, western line and the Surat Basin, just here, that's vital for mobilising coal uh, out of that southern Surat region up here uh, to pay for the project. Uh, and then ultimately the bit between Toowoomba and the Port of Brisbane, uh, which is shown on this slide. Um, so we drill down a little bit further into, again, what, are, what is, I believe, phase one of inland rail and the key element and where most of that 300 million, in fact, probably all of it, but it won't be all of it, but most of it needs to be focused, is this section. Uh, we call it the dedicated freight rail corridor. We've been working on it at the port for the last uh, two and a half to three years. We've invested over $4 million, and it's the subject of an IA submission that Rory's got in his hot hands at the moment. So uh, we're keen to see it uh, move forward. Um, it includes uh, Toowoomba Range uh, crossing. It includes removing uh, all of the freight out of the urban areas uh, of, or the, uh, yeah, the urban areas of Toowoomba, Ipswich, and Brisbane. Uh, the key elements, firstly, the port connection. That's the bit with the green, uh, sorry, the red uh, bubble around it. Um, that's uh, running from uh, the port to the existing north-south line. The existing north-south line being the, the the blue section here. Uh, it's uh, the most difficult. Um, uh, because it is a highly urbanised area, uh, it is certainly uh, needs to be a subsurface solution. Probably not a tunnel has been touted, but, but certainly a subsurface solution, probably using the gateway motorway alignment, which is already uh, a tier one freight route, originally set aside for rail and road, at the moment only road. The second element, southern freight rail bypass, is the green section, goes around the back of Ipswich uh, and the western suburbs of Brisbane to connect the existing western line, which is the dark blue section, into the light blue existing north-south line. Uh, running from Rosewood to Kagaroo, uh, that corridor is ready for detailed design, final land acquisition and construction. Uh, in essence, it's ready to go. Uh, most of that corridor has already been acquired. It's already a designated rail corridor, uh, pretty much ready to go. Needs to be the first section of inland rail that, that, that is built, in my, my, my humble opinion. Um, the third section, Toowoomba Bypass and the Range Crossing, uh, ARTC has done a fair bit of uh, work on this. Um, it requires uh, detail, detailed feasibility. Uh, we need to put a circle around it and do a bankable feasibility study on that as part of phase one of uh, inland rail, just as we need to do 
or the port link area with the, um, the orange red bubble there. And the last part, the Western Line upgrade to access the, the coal fields. If we, can, uh, if we can cover off on each of those four points as part of phase one of inland rail, then we're actually developing something that can be commercially feasible for the private sector to take on going forward and allow the federal government to focus its funds on the next element of inland rail. So what are the benefits of dedicated freight rail servicing the Port of Brisbane uh, and servicing out to northern New South Wales, Queensland's agricultural areas? Well, firstly, it allows us to establish realistic intermodal hubs, decentralise industry away from the port, away from the urbanised areas, and into regional Australia, which obviously is a big boon for the growth of regional Australia. It will lower freight costs for agricultural industry. It needs to lower freight costs for agricultural industry, uh, and that must be part of the mix. We'll have lower freight uh, uh, truck volumes on our regional roads and on our urban roads. Uh, obviously reduced road capital, reduced road spending in terms of maintenance, increased economic productivity, carbon emission impacts lower and significantly lower particulate and noise impacts. We hear a lot about coal dust on trains. Uh, it's nothing compared to what comes off a truck uh, in an average journey. Uh, stepping briefly away from uh, uh, a project itself and talking more generally in how we fund our, our transport infrastructure going forward in this, this country, uh, transport infrastructure is critical to stimulating the economic growth of, of our economy, but our government has been focused more and more of late, uh, particularly over the last 30 years, on, on social spending priorities. Uh, spending as a percentage of GDP on infrastructure has gone down for the last 30 years significantly, uh, and at the same time our state and federal governments are uh, burdened. Uh, by very high debt levels, which means they have an inability to spend on infrastructure. At the same time, our costs uh, of building infrastructure has gone up, uh, and that means less infrastructure is being built. There's a number of ways we can solve that. Um, obviously, increased taxes is probably not overly attractive. Uh, decreased social spending won't be overly attractive either, although that is something that needs to happen. Uh, but fundamentally, we need to push towards uh, more private sector funding of infrastructure. We need to mobilise our superannuation funds uh, to be uh, investing into our infrastructure task going forward. And that means we need to create commercial maturity for our infrastructure projects, including our transport projects, such as inland rail. There's a whole heap of things that need to happen for that. But uh, three of the key ones is we need to move towards user pays. Uh, if you use it, you need to pay for it. And that's the way it needs to go. We need to move into an asset recycling mode where we're privatising commercial, commercially mature assets and reinvesting those funds into commercially immature assets to allow them to mature and then privatise again. Uh, and we need to reinvigorate our planning mechanism, uh, both on a state, federal and, and local level, uh, to mobilise as much uh, revenue as we can out of our agricultural mineral industries to pay for our, our, uh, our infrastructure as we go forward. Uh, applying that to inland rail, fundamentally inland rail is a commercially immature asset. Uh, and the, the, the delivery and financing mechanisms must realise this. It's, it's no point moving this asset to the private sector too early. We need to deploy feed, federal government seed funding to get the asset moving, get it into commercial maturity, uh, and then look for the private sector to play its part. Uh, we need to plan for volume. Uh, that means we need to connect the port, uh, need to connect inland rail to the port. That wasn't the original plan, uh, which is crazy, uh, because that cuts out 90% of your traffic. Uh, so it needs to be connected to the port. Uh, we need to mobilise coal traffic, uh, as I was mentioning before, to help pay for it. Uh, we need to ensure that the user pays uh, tariff structure is correct uh, to mobilise as much volume as possible, uh, as much revenue as possible. Uh, and we need to design the program for delivering inland rail around asset recycling, completing the bits that are most commercially mature first, recycling those in the private sector, and then applying those funds to the next element of inland rail, for example. If we look at the operating criteria, uh, we need to set this up for the success of the project, not gold plate it. Uh, we're not looking for the perfect solution here. Uh, we, too often these sorts of projects get taken over by zealots who want the perfect solution and it never gets built. Uh, the reality is we need to design for the whole, a whole of life operation. That's not the lowest copper, uh, capex, it's not the lowest opex, it's a, it's a blend of both. We need to have our operating criteria to maximise returns, our tariff structure to maximise returns and therefore increase the chance of delivery of the project. It needs to be dual gauge in Queensland, as I mentioned before, mobilise the, the rest of the Queensland freight system and connect into the New South Wales standard gauge freight system to mobilise that freight. It must not be designed for passengers. I say again, not designed for passengers. This is a freight network and we should be unashamed of that. And we need to balance 
uh, speed with cost. We don't want a 200 kilometre hour rail line between Brisbane and Melbourne because it will never be built. So we need to get realistic around that. Whoops. Sorry. Last slide. In summary, uh, agricultural industry needs efficient route to market. That means an interlinked road and rail solution plus coastal shipping. Uh, we are far too truck focused at the moment. Our logistics chain is archaic on a global setting and we need to address this modal share issue quickly. Uh, fundamentally, that is an infrastructure solution. Uh, I think it's, it's right to look at many productivity issues as efficiency solutions in the way we do things, but this is fundamentally an infrastructure solution that's required. We need an efficient rail system going west and south out of Brisbane and a coastal shipping system going north. The key for that rail system is inland rail. Uh, Port of Brisbane is a major strategic advantage for uh, our agricultural industry in New South Wales and Queensland, but it is being wasted to a degree because of the poor logistics infrastructure feeding into it. Uh, we need a modern, efficient logistics system. Uh, we have the roadmap uh, to do that. Uh, that's what I presented today, and now it's just a case of delivering it. Thank you.